Federal employees, beneficiary forms? What beneficiary forms? You filed these when you started working within the first 60 days? Do you remember what you put there? Probably not. Stay tuned to learn more. Welcome to the Mason and Associates YouTube channel. I'm John Mason, certified financial planner. And today we're continuing the topic of our like estate planning mini series, estate planning videos that we've been doing. Um, you heard talk a little bit about TSP3 and those beneficiaries. If you missed that, we can maybe link that below or put it in the description. Ben Rakes did some videos on financial power of attorneys and advanced medical directives and healthcare power of attorneys. Folks, if you don't have an estate plan, somebody has an estate plan for you. It's either the government's estate plan, whether that's OPM or the United States or Virginia or whatever state you live in. If you don't have a plan, somebody has a plan and I'm not sure that you're gonna like the default. So beneficiary forms. So, so much goes into, man, I really need a trust or man, I really need a will. And chances are, if you're watching this video, Many of you may have one of these gigantic red books lying around your house. And, and I'm gonna hate on these books and I'm gonna love on these books at the same time. So estate planning attorneys, like them, don't like them, many of them use software. And software is fine because we need software to do things efficiently. Well, these gigantic red books are very, very complicated, folks. And there's a lot of information in here and frankly, sometimes we think they're too big. So we can pick on these gigantic red books all we want, but having that plan is better than having no plan. Alternatively, you could have an estate plan that's much simpler, easier to understand, and those documents also get the job done. But if you don't have one of those binders, you need to get a binder in place. You need to have something so your beneficiaries know what's happening, your spouse knows what's happening, and you have fiduciaries that have been put in place to help you when either, either you're dead or when you're incapacitated, okay? So let's pretend just for a second that everybody watching this video has one of those beautiful red books. You've got one, you put it on the shelf, you told all your kids about it, you showed your spouse, you showed everybody, and then you let it sit there and it's collecting dust. What exactly have you done? The answer is you've done nothing. So, well, let me take that back. Maybe you did something, maybe in this creation of this gigantic red book, maybe you did like, a um, transfer on death deed for your house, or maybe you transferred the ownership from joint tenants into your trust. Maybe you did do something, but just the act of getting the book is almost meaningless because what's gonna happen is you actually have to act on it. You actually have to do something to coordinate with that estate plan. Just having the book, just having the pages isn't enough. We need to have a comprehensive review of how we title assets. Should they be owned by John Mason or should the assets be owned by John Mason's trust? Should they be owned John and spouse or should they be owned John and spouse's trust? See, all of these go into a properly designed estate plan. It's not just about getting the red book. I mentioned this in the TSP video, and again, we'll link that below where we talk about TSP3 and those beneficiary designations, but it's important to understand the order of precedence as it comes to estate planning. So when we distribute assets, first, we look for joint ownership. Second, we look for beneficiaries. And third, if we don't have any of those, it flows down to your will and to your trust, right? So joint ownership, bennies, will and trust. So three layers. Well, we don't have and can't have joint ownership on many things like life insurance policies, IRAs, Roth IRAs, what have you. So the only option we have is either beneficiary or let my will and trust take care of it. Well, we're gonna specifically talk about beneficiary designations that you have available to you in the federal government that you probably forgot about. So there are three forms. You have the standard form 2823, you have the standard form 3102, and then you have the standard form 1152. So let me repeat those. Standard form SF 2823, 3102, in 1152. Folks, this is your FEGLI, your FERS, and your unpaid compensation. Just like in the TSP video, if you don't have these forms on file, 
The government has a plan for you. It's called an order of precedence or a statutory list where they're gonna say it goes to spouse, kids, parents, or what have you by default. So if you don't have that beneficiary form on file or it got lost in the paper drill from the 80s and 90s and today, then yeah, we probably should have another one of those forms on file. So again, let's pretend that all of you have this properly drafted estate plan. Maybe for your life insurance, you had your primary beneficiary as your spouse. Maybe now that person, and say, maybe it should be your trust, right? So a properly designed estate plan, a good estate planning attorney would have given you that direction at closing. Thank you for completing this mag magnificent book. Here's your beautiful red binder. Please go do these things. Number one may have been list your um, trust as primary beneficiary of your life insurance. Maybe they helped you on your term life insurance through XYZ company, but they weren't smart enough to help you with your federal employees group life insurance. So revisit the Fegley beneficiary. Same thing with FERS and same thing with unpaid compensation. This is not a video advising you or, or um, telling you to do anything. It's just making you aware that there are three distinct beneficiary forms that if you have not updated recently or ever, we need to fill those out to complement your estate plan. If you do not have a binder, if you do not have any documents in place, these beneficiary forms become even more important because we certainly don't want things flowing through um, intestate, going through those intestacy laws, intestacy laws, depending on the state you live in. Folks, another video by Mason and Associates. We hope you're enjoying this content. We're loving it. Remember, right here at Mason and Associates, things are what they seem. We're here to support, empower, educate, and motivate you to make changes in your financial plan. We're hoping we're doing that through this content, but you know what we'd love even better? We'd love a shot to help you individually. And if you'd like individual one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of our advisors, we offer introductory phone calls at masonllc.net. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and the bell. We'll talk to you soon. We're Mason and Associates, masonllc.net.